Welcome to Meet the Parents, a podcast where we talk about the good, the bad and the ugly from parenting and beyond. Uh, I think we should at the top, by the way, I'm Deanna Dordy and this is my husband, Sean Haggerty. Um, if you're new to the podcast, I think we should plug our shows at the top because we keep forgetting to do that and we have lots of shit you guys need to come to. Yeah, let's start at the beginning. So first off, we have Sunny Side Up. Yeah. By the way, thank you if you came to see Elf in Belfast. It sold out the entire run. Yeah. And we're, we're blown away by what's about to come into our banks. Holla. <laughs> no. Do you know Generally, funny? yeah, it was class. The amount of people that were that went to that and thought that my brother was on stage because the yeah. actor is the opposite spit of my brother and then the girl sort of resembles me if I had longer hair again and it was people were like, is that? It's like, did you just, did you just cast people that look <laughs> like weird you and your brother? It's a kind of fucking... <laughs> yeah. I can't be it. Yeah. I'm going to cast two carbon copies of me and my sibling. Yeah, but everything we heard was first class. Was, people loved it. Yeah, it was it was a good show. So Sunny Side Up is at the Lyric this April for two weeks. It's a one woman dark comedy play. It's I've taken experience from um or taken drawn from the experience of having done IVF and going through like a fertility journey and it's a one woman show, hopefully starring me. I, I I'm a bit overstretched this year. I don't know if I'm definitely gonna do it, but if not it'll be a fantastic actress who will be better than me. So either way it'll be either good or very good. Or me in a dress if no one's available. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tickets back are on the Lyric website you can also go to my stand-up tour Got Milf lots of the venues are sold out but the ones that do have most availability are Mandela Hall and Millennium Forum Holla yeah then we have written Sex in the City Hall which is going on a two week tour early September and a week in the Grand Opera House. And a week House. in the Grand Opera House as well. So um, all the tickets, it's all amalgamated into one ticket link, isn't it? On Linktree, which we will send to the lads and it'll be added to this description. I asked you at the start of the podcast, did you have your phone on silent? Yes, but I've just got a very important message from my mum. Let me know that Tesco has a sale on. The towels are £3. So did you right. want me to miss that message? Yeah. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> wonder why she thinks I need towels. What was the word that... Um, what was the girl's name first? Nadine Coyle. They said flower, wasn't it? Flower powder in the shower. And then what did you just say? Towel. Towel. Do you know in, um, what do you call it, the Hendry, my show last year, I hadn't written this line, but the brilliant actress, Joe Donnelly, added it in and it always got such a great laugh where she's on the phone, she's in the hotel in Spain and she's on the phone to the reception and she's asking them, does she have to do the siesta? Like, do, or can she skip the siesta? Does everyone have to do the siesta nap when they go to Spain? <laughs> and then she's all, also what time can I chuck out the towels? Because you know the Germans, they get straight out there in the morning. And she, then she added in where she goes, towels, towels, <laughs> towels. And then they're all, ah, because yeah. they can't understand towels on the phone. But everyone here surely says towels. I would say towels. You're absolutely mental because that's not how we say it. So I say it. Say it. Say it, a towel with an owl on it. A, a towel, towel with, with an, an owl. owl. Are you English? <laughs> Do you know our lighting designer too for Alf in Belfast. I'm not going to say names or whatever because I've already, I suppose I've singled them out enough as it is. <laughs> but yeah. um, he says that he grew up in Ballymena, but his parents sent him to elocution lessons when he was younger. Because they obviously didn't want him to have a fucking oh Balmain accent. Oh my God. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. That's, they literally were like, so do they have a Balmain accent? And they were like, well, I doubt it. We're I not going to give you this. They were like, we'll live in Balmain, but we're not telling anybody. Like, no one oh will know. <laughs> they probably have a P.O. box in fucking Malone Road. <laughs> they have to go and collect all their mail every, once a week. That's that's wild. Yeah. But you wonder why? Because I have done voiceovers as well. Like this, like I, there's a there's a, there's still sections of this country that are obsessed with us sounding less like us, and you know as if our accent is a disability or something. And especially when they go to sell things, like when you do lots of voiceovers, they sometimes want you to sound less from here. And do you remember that time? A hotel asked. The voiceover came through for like a hotel and they were like, we like it to sound a bit anglicised. Mm. So like less sort of Northern Irish or Irish or whatever. And I was livid because I was yeah. like, why? Your hotels in London or something? Do you know I was like, why Why do you need me to sound more English? To say, you're, you're selling it on a local radio station that's only played here for people who are from here to go to that hotel. Sad, isn't it? So I on purpose, do you remember... Did like a funny voice. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did a voice. It, it sounded it? like I needed a yawn the whole time. 
I did a vo- I was like, come to a hotel and stay here. We will, it's 99 pound a night for a full suite. And I did it like that. And obviously they just book a voice. They don't really know the person. So it's not as if they were like, that's not what doing what sounds like. They were just like, oh, we must have hired some middle-aged <laughs> woman who's got a fancy voice. It sounds like she needs a bit of a yawn, but we'll go with it. And then it was on the radio. And I remember just being like, oh, why would you air that? It's me being like, oh, <laughs> Do your hotel voiceover which if you get booked today a hotel voiceover do it into the mic um it depends on the hotel because if it was travel lodge, I'd be like third nine pound for a night <laughs> mom down fucks. bring your own pillows <laughs> 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 but if it was like the slave genre, I'd be like indulge in a exclusive mm. luxurious day that's a bit different but yeah. it's like whenever you get booked for different supermarkets too like if you're doing like an M&S one obviously you have to get on as if you're like Hi, bucking the fruit do you know what I mean yeah. but if you do like if you're Stuart. getting booked for like uh, <laughs> Stuart that's <laughs> not exist anymore I was just naming like a high street kind of <laughs> <laughs> just fucking come to Stuart's by <laughs> like the last time you did the groceries was the 90s mm. uh, if you're doing like lead this one it's all Monday look down the middle aisle for a wee gander like it's <laughs> completely different clientele People well, still recognise you from the lead lads, from all the stuff you've done since. People hate it's it. It's hilarious that people come up to you and go, are you the little girl? Before punching me in the face, people hated it so much. I was like, I felt like the go compare guy for a while mm. after I did the lead lad. Nobody was going, that was great. That was great. Great job. People were going, that was so annoying. I but like, you, but I- you were playing a character, obviously. You weren't on as... Do you want already? Do you know, you weren't well, fucking patting the change in your back pocket and stuff. You were... That's Iceland. I know. Oh, I... Your front pocket then? Yeah, I know, but it's uh, people People were not a fan of that yeah. little lad. And did, <laughs> obviously, like, we it was me and Kerry Quinn and Dan Gordon, and we'd done three different versions of the ad. And it was quite a big, like, they put a lot into it. Do you know what I mean? Like, they made them, like, well. You just run the front of it, all the trolleys and stuff, too. That's where I love to be. Mm. And they, they, they had put a lot into doing the ads, like a good budget. And we shot it for like four or five days. Like it was a big thing. And then they came out and it was supposed to last for three three years. And it was maybe about eight months later. And do you remember they contacted my agent? Mm. And they were like, this is so awful. They're like, what can we pay her to get rid of it? Yeah. <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> Foster, were you involved in that? More, more on the edit. So it's your fault? What were they saying? You worked in the edit. <laughs> what were they saying? They were like, this is so annoying. Report. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, it's just not working. And they, they literally were like, what can we, what, what, what's the fee for us to get rid of this? Because it was supposed, there was a contract that you'd maybe get repaid each year for its usage. And they were like, can we just buy her out and dump it? And I was like, I think my agent highballed them, like gave them like a big figure just so that they couldn't get rid of it. And I think they just seen it out. They just, but they just stopped doing it, didn't they? Did, they just they didn't, just... they didn't, they didn't renew it or whatever. But yeah. you're just like, oh, well, listen, <clears throat> M&S will call someday. We've done some shit though, haven't we, between us? One time, just not long after we met, we stood outside Tesco dressed as a bin and a banana. Who was the banana and who was the bin? I was the bin. I was the banana. Do you, you know why I think I made you be the banana? Because you'd be taller. <laughs> <laughs> not like you didn't want to be I don't want to be the banana because then I'd be standing beside you taller mm. so I was all obviously you can be the banana <laughs> and we had to hand out stuff for World Recycling Day it's funny too because every time I stood in your toe your mouth opened do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was I was in Newton Breda Tesco's I just up the road there aye there's been that some we've done some shite and even then, in terms of like jobs when we were children or growing up, I've done everything. Like my my son got like what his second, maybe third job in his entire life, and he's twenty this week. I was I'd have had, had three jobs by the time I was fourteen. Oh, I'd have been a fucking handyman by that age. But you have done everything. Everything, everything. I've chopped sticks in a factory and in, in somebody's shed, just like a wee machine that just does that. It just sounds like why is that in someone's shed? Who needed that? Just done? packing sticks. Just some guy was like, I'll sticks. give you a favour yeah. a week. It was fucking. Did like you let me hour. watch you chop sticks? <laughs> <laughs> I had to wear the full costume and stuff to yeah, you're like, a lumberjack. Yeah, you're like, why am I in a vest top? It's winter. He's like, just you, just you. Why have you got oil? Chop the sticks. It's all part of it. <laughs> um, yeah. And then what else have you done? What else have I done? I've assembled bikes in a toy shop. You've been the manager of a cinema, which I think people manager will be most cinema. surprised about. Yeah. Worked in game. Which I think is even more surprising because you don't game. Not at all. 
like people would come in and go, how do you get past level five in Zelda when the man jumps out and the mummy's like, there? Turn it off, like, virgin. I, I, don't fu- I don't fucking know. I have no Surely idea. Surely you have to have some sort of interest in gaming to work no. in game. No. Maybe you do now, but you didn't when I when I worked there. Because do you know the way like you used to go into HMV and they'd know all about the music? Mm. I used to love going into HMV and you could lift the earphones because all the singles were sat out in the wall, but everyone, you'd lift earphones and listen to the song. Yeah. And like, it was class, wasn't it? You just used to go and listen to the song and then leave again. You're like, well, I don't need to buy it now. Mm. I'll just come in You've tomorrow again and listen to the song again. Isn't it sad how far we've come? Maybe sad or obviously a good thing as well, where you used to have to listen to the radio for four or five hours to hear your favourite song. Yeah, or watch Top of the Pops, on. or you know, but then top that taught hits you or patience because everything is so on demand now. Like we say this all the time, we'd be driving in the car with the kids in winter, but like, can I have this song on? And it's you're, you're like, okay, go go play Opportunity by Annie, and like it comes on straight away. You know, you're loads like, of people have now. I know, set I did off. that on purpose because I did that. Is there it? was a clip in the blame game where I said, okay, Google, and all the comments below were like, my phone went off when you did that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Google, Alexa. Um, so you, it's just instant and you just it's like they, they, there's nobody will have any patience anymore whereas we would have had they have, like if you knew what was coming up in the number one countdown on a 40 remember Chris Moyes used to do the, the what do you call it top 40 countdown top 40 charts, charts mm-hmm. on a Sunday and you would like persevere and listen through the crap to get to the top 10 mm. I mean you could have just went away and came back and listened to the top 10 <laughs> yeah, <you> but <laughs> I'd listen to all 40 <laughs> Or just tune your Walkman into Radio 1 yeah. and then just hit the time. Stuarts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. What's your worst job? What What's the worst job you've ever had? Um, One time I I, hand, I put flyers through doors but uh, it was for it was for somebody who was like do you want to put the flyers through doors and then it's like on Monday leave a bag of clothes out mm. and Th- this company I was working for, company, definitely just some fella. Company, your man, eh? <laughs> but they, they, I think they were letting on to be like a charity or something. I think they were taking the bags of clothes and then like, you, you know, like you sell them. Like you get them weighed and you get whatever. Mm. I don't know. I think that's what their whole thing was. But I think I, I think usually that is a charity. You leave them out for like Bernardo's or something. And I did that. And I remember them contacting me the next day going, your whole area that you left flyers off, nobody left any clothes out. And usually, like statistically, we would get like three per street or something. So you should there should have been 12 bags in your area. And I was like, that's because I put the flyers in the bin. Fucking hell. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was all, how will they know? But obviously, how yeah, will no. they know when there's no clothes left out in bags? Yeah. All right, so that was probably... Um, but I don't, that was only a day. Didn't you work for... BT as well for yes. like a summer at a time when there was a strike on and nobody did any work for the entire summer um, there was a what do you call it not a strike maybe it was a strike it was in the BT tower building in Belfast and it was for a call centre and I don't even know what company it was I was working for because we never did any work we arrived on a Monday and they were like oh a strike started this morning and I was like, okay, so I go home. And they're like, no, no, like we still have to, you're technically now contracted, so you have to stay here, like the, say you're trying to nine to five for the, the, the full time in the week. And we stayed there every day for just three hours and played the Wii. And for three months, I got paid a full time wage to play the Wii for three hours a day. And then I went back to uni. That's unreal. And it was great. We didn't have to do anything. But was that not at a time where you took on a full time job and they were like, are you sure you're not? I was pretending. You're not in, in class here? But that's or? what you do. Like if you leave uni and you want to work full time over the summer, very rarely is somebody going to hire you and go, I wish sure I will let you leave in three months. You have to mm. be like, do you know what? I was studying law there for a year, <laughs> but I think I really want to work for Vodafone. Yeah. So I think what I'll do is I'll just leave law and work for Vodafone. And then it comes to the end of the summer and you're all, I might give law another go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's the brilliant. way it works. I had a an interview actually in that BT tower and I went in and the manager says to me, he goes, hey, there's a pen, sell me that pen. No. And I was like, this job's not for me. And that was, that was it. You didn't, didn't tell him the didn't pen? Didn't take the job, no. I, I think he's seen that in a movie. Probably. That's that sort of thing, isn't it? Sell it's me this pen. Wall Street kind of aye. shade, isn't it? Aye. You're like, mm. I don't want, you do know what you should say to him, you already own that pen. Yeah. 
Why do I need to sell you? <laughs> you know, you need help. <laughs> Why do you want me to sell you your own pen? That's bad business on your behalf because you're now paying for something you already own. I should have asked him could I buy it off him. <laughs> yeah. Try to bargain him. No, what is it? Is it in the, the American office? Michael Scott does that. And they go, sell me this pen. And the guy goes, I don't want to sell you this pen. I want to keep this pen. And then Michael Scott's all, no, well, no, I want the pen. He's all, no, I want the pen. And then he goes, finally, you have the pen. And he's all, oh, good move. <laughs> was that Michael Scott? I think so, yeah. yeah. Maybe not. No, I think mm. it was, yeah. Speaking of The Office, um, the last episode of The Blame Game there, Felicity Ward was on it, uh, an Australian, London-based comedian. And she is the, f- I, th- I don't know if it's the first, but the first that I know of anyway, female lead in The in the Office. Brilliant. The Australian office has just been shot and the lead character, the David Brent slash Michael Scott, is a woman. Michelle Scott. Michelle, Michelle Scott. is a, don't know why I did it in French. She's there in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, is a woman. And the Dwight character... Who is played by... It's the Stephen Merchant character, isn't it? He's also a woman. Uh, uh, it's not going to be funny. Nobody will watch it. <laughs> uh, that'll be class. I wonder, can we get it up here? Up here? Over here? Around here? Aye. Do you think so? I don't know. I mean... We dodgy first. It might go on. Um, we probably first. Give it a first, I'd love. It'll probably go on Netflix. Yeah. Um, that'll, right. be, that'll be class. I was at the recording of that one too. It was the first time I'd seen you in the Blame Game. And um, she mad. was on the Blame Game. She was fucking brilliant. She was brilliant. You were brilliant too, but she was brilliant as well. She was brilliant there. She was just as you, brilliant. That was too long of a delay there. She was just as brilliant. No, too long of a delay. Don't believe it. I, I was trying like, to think of a word like that first was answer. just as brilliant, but in a, how you did. What do you call your man one. who does mastermind? John Humphreys. I'll take your first answer. Is that what he say says? No. <laughs> 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 Don't think so. <laughs> does he not go, I'll take your first answer? No. <laughs> But that's, that's, that's like you... pretense. Why would he say that in pretense? You'd say like, I have to go with your first answer. I am going to take your first answer. Like, that's what a lot of game show hosts would do, is it not? You go, see, so you go like, oh, the answer's 75. No, 76. And they go, I'm going to have to take your first answer. Yeah. <laughs> and remind me never to host a game show. I'll be shit at it. Yeah. Um, Christmas is well and truly over us now. And no. uh, how's your new year going? Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. Do have it's great. stuck to everything? Do you know what's great? Looking around your house and the decorations are down. It's great, isn't it? You're like, what are it's we like, used to have yeah, there? No, I know, I know. It's like one of them things where it's when you go on holidays and you're like, oh, it's good to get away, but it's good to come back. It's like Aye. it's good getting your decorations up, but it's good to get, to get them get out, out of the road too, isn't it? Get a wee hoover around areas that haven't been hoovered in a while. Exactly. Oh, I it's love great. that. It's great. Um, but we're off boozing for a while. Yeah. Not that we have a problem. But no, that was, just, that was, I don't know why yeah. that was your knee jerk reaction to, yeah, but no, we're just like, I think people just go like dry January, don't they? Clean. Worst time to have a, have, have a gig is in January and everyone's sober and they're all, actually, you're shite. I know, I know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I know. But then they say that nobody gigs in January because everyone's broke and everyone's trying to fucking pay have back a couple Christmas. Gigs, so people better be at them. I don't think so. Nobody will show up. Well, no, they'll not be, they'll, they'll be sober if they do. Yeah. Um, There's nothing the, worse than a sober gig, is there? You can really tell the difference if you have a gig in like the afternoon. But this is the thing, like, so then, because you, you said to me today, like, why do people drink? To have a better time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But they get loose too and uh, forget their troubles and it's loads of reasons, isn't there? Because I think when you, like, <clears throat> if you have a stressful life and you, like, have a couple of drinks, you're like, it's like having a holiday in your brain. Mm. Do you know we're all like, I can forget all the shit I have to do for like two, three hours and then... Back to it. I wonder is that when you take drugs and they call it tripping, is that you're going on a trip? No, a trip's a bad thing, is it not? They're for drugs. Either way, we're the you're, two you're having an out of body experience. Yeah, people aren't ever. We're all no, like, no, no. I think a trip's a bad thing when you're when you're doing the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Look, um, on, I, I'm, I'm tripping out. Is that American? Fuck, get off TikTok. <laughs> I think it is. I think that's what it is. Uh, <clears throat> Do you think Christmas ever lives up to the hype? As I said, in the car on the way down, I think everything is what you make it in your own head. So mm-hmm. I think it depends on what you've got going on, how busy you are in work, how stressed you are. Do you know, like, I think it's always good to, do you like when, like, we worked, like, constantly in December. But then knowing that I had, like, four gigs between Christmas and New Year mm. made me find it really hard to enjoy Christmas. Because yeah, it was, like, two or three days off. Yeah, just. she barely had two days. But then, but then they were all great gigs. So that's uh, another... And you don't know beforehand... beforehand. You're just like, what? what is this? What is this going to be? 
but it's like you know when you put so much time and effort into like getting your kids presents and wrapping them and trying to make the whole thing magical for them yeah. and then it can be a shit show and you're and you're like oh like I've done so much like and, but you can't tell them because obviously Santa does all stuff and then you can't you can't be like I've done everything here like you know yeah. what I mean but that's the thing with um like I remember last year I was pregnant winter was one and a half and she was a nightmare all day Christmas Day. All day. And you're like looking at her going, do you not know it's Christmas Day? Be grateful. She's one and a half. Mm. Like she can't. She's just like, it's just another day to her, but with a couple of presents. Whereas this year, she was much more like, she was much more into Santa and much more excited for she Christmas. She really switched on, wasn't she? She's completely switched on because she's like two and a half. But she has started taking major tantrums all, like this Christmas is when I think, she's like a couple months off three, but the terrible twos have really started now. Yeah. Do you think there may be like one and a half to two and a half? And we'll hopefully just get like a tail end and then she'll stop in a couple of weeks. The, Sean, what, what happened the day? She, what happened on her second birthday? Can't remember. Blew out candles probably. <laughs> no, the day she turned two, she threw a shitstorm that day. Hmm? And we were like, oh my God. It's like, it's like, do you know, like um, Kevin from Kevin? The that turns like a teenager at midnight. And all of a sudden he's all like, he's like, this here at 11.59. Then midnight comes and goes, ooh. Just mm-hmm. becomes an asshole. That's what she was like as soon as she, the, the second she turned two. But then, not really that much after that. But this Christmas, the tantrums have been outrageous. Like, there was one a few days ago whenever we were trying to get her to have a bath. And, you know, like once a month she gets a bath. And she, <laughs> <laughs> no, but she was trying, we were trying to get her to have a bath. And we don't bath them every night. Lots of parents bath their kids every night. I don't know how they can be bothered, but we do it every couple of days. And, she did not want to get into the bath and she was just screaming. Like, Which is crazy because she loves it. You can't get her out of it when I, she gets into it. I hate that. But she hates getting in. I, you get her under it and she's like, I I'm not getting out. And mm-hmm. she's like shriveling up and you're like, why was it 20 <laughs> minutes to get you in here? Yeah. And she screamed the place down and I felt really bad in her because I had already like stripped her down to get into the bath and she was just running around with a hand on her screaming and then she found her vest and she was like, do you know what I was like, do you like a pass like a, a woman who's like, well, I'm f- no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And it fell out, no, what's wrong with me? No, no, I'm all right. I'm just getting ready. She had her vest and she was like, <sighs> like trying to put her vest on, like really annoyed and all, but like ignoring my presence at all. Because I was like, do you want help to put your vest back on? She was like, <sighs> like ignore me. And then she like put her arm through the head bit and it was inside out. And then she put her <laughs> other arm through like the bottom bit and she was all stuck in it like this. And she, she just, she doesn't know how to dress herself yet. And she was all, <sighs> <laughs> like in her vest all what are you gonna do <laughs> just like and I was like you still have to take that vest off and go to the bath and she was like no and she's like standing there with a the vest and no neckers on just like mm. <laughs> it's like raging do you find though too like it was yesterday as well when she she cracked the lid as well and she was standing at the glass door in the kitchen <laughs> and I walked downstairs and she was just standing like that just screaming Yeah. and you were behind her like telling her off or something she wouldn't let me in that's what she was standing was, there so that I couldn't open the door. She couldn't leave. Yeah. And then it just took just me to come in and I just came in and got down to her level. Uh, and uh, she the, just hugged me. And, face. Yeah, of course. But that's what I mean. It's like sometimes it just takes another person to enter and then it just sort of dilutes just instantly. It's just... Well, there are two schools of thought for that. First one, that's distraction, mm. which is great, but it teaches them nothing. So then, it's a great way to end the situation to be like... Oh, he, oh, look, there's a cow in the air. Do you know what I mean? And then they're all, what? And then they forget what they're screaming about. And then they... they yeah, if you if you leave it at that. But I obviously talked to her and said to her, what happened? Why are you sad? Why are you crying? Do you know, and then you yeah. just kind of wait till she comes back down a wee bit. And then you just talk to her, just sort of... Because I think the distraction thing works until a certain age because they can't... You can't talk sense into them when they're like one and a half or two. You're maybe not even winter's age. Maybe soon you will be able to. She'll be able to like level with you a bit more. Yeah. But until they're like three, apparently they can't regulate their emotions and they can't see sense. You you know you would be like, listen, you can't scream and shout like that. You need to get your bath. You don't know how to dress yourself. You've made yourself a prisoner in your vest. Yeah. Like you can't yeah. behave like this. And then they're just gonna, you know, and they'll just be like, okay. You know, but I'm a tooth fairy, and you're all what? <laughs> How is this a conversation? Because they don't want, they don't understand yet. She said last week, I, when I grow up, I want to be a tooth fairy. She told me this morning she wants to be a tooth fairy. I'm like, that's really terrible business. Like, <laughs> <We're> <laughs> so invest in I are not going to go near you. You know, <laughs> you're fucking, you're giving people money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but she's also taking their teeth. 
I know, I know. She's such a creep. It's mental. She's going to Tesco and she's all, that'll be 37 t- teeth. <laughs> Just fucking <laughs> getting out a wee bag. A wee teeth purse. But she, uh, the other day too, like whenever she was in, in the kitchen at one point and she was, she started a tantrum in a room on her own. Nobody had, remember? We were yeah. in the living room and she started going, she was holding her hairbrush and just shouting, I don't like it. Just crying, I don't like it, I don't like it, on repeat. And I was like, is she talking about her lunch that she's just finished? Or is she talking about something else? And there was no, like, setup for that situation. There was no, nothing happened. She wasn't talking to anyone. And I was like, why is she having a shit on her own, having a tantrum? Mm-hmm. And then... um. I was all, and we were getting a bit, we were just getting sick of it because there was like one every day at this point and I just went over and closed the door between the living room and the kitchen but obviously a glass door that you can still see through but you can hear her less. I closed the door. <laughs> she got down off the chair, came over and opened the door again and then went back and continued shouting because she wanted us to hear her. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that, that's usually what, that's why kids do things, isn't it? For yeah, attention because a, they need to be seen and heard. Yeah, but she stopped, came over, opened the door and then went back to the chair and then started going, I <laughs> I was like, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I put the TV on for her the other morning and I went down and boiled the kettle and as the kettle started boiling, she came over to the door and just like closed the door and just like looked at me <laughs> and I just went back over and sat down and was eating me Is dry like, cereal. I can't hear Ben and yeah. Holly over your boiling kettle. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah, but I, it's it's hard to know what to do. That's the main problem. But have you noticed too that we've been working on her sleep pattern kind of changing and she hasn't wanted to take naps? The past mm. few weeks too, so it could all be kind of intertwined. It could be linked, you know. Like we tiredness. Haven't seen figured that out. Tiredness or just her change in her body and her, you know, she's getting older and maybe she's, she's maybe just hitting, just a, hitting a new phase or a milestone. Yeah. Ah, because whenever they have like growth spurts and all that sort of stuff, loads of stuff change. I always yeah. think it's really funny when you think about like babies. Whenever they learn a new skill, their sleep gets disrupted. But that's mainly because when they open their eyes in between sleep cycles, they move around, they start to go, fuck, I can crawl. <laughs> I might do some crawling. <laughs> I'm going to do some crawling. <laughs> Let's crawl. And then they like they start to do that there and then all of a sudden they're all, why am I in the middle of the night and I'm awake and then they start crying for you to come and put them back to sleep. But like mm-hmm. that's what happens. They wake up and they're all, shit, I can do stuff. Mm-hmm. Remember today I learned how to hold something. <laughs> I know. I wonder when it's going to get to the point where she she'll just go, my toys are over there. Like I... I don't have to sleep when that door closes. Nobody can see me. Well, that's what she did during her nap yesterday. I can just climb out and play with toys. I know, but that was her just decided herself. Like, she rebelled because we were saying to her, you have to take your nap, otherwise you'll be tired all day. And she was like, I don't want to take my nap. And we were like, you, you have to. But when toddlers throw tantrums, it is the most testing thing. Like, you mm. don't know what's the right way to approach it because, like... I I remember the other day being like, oh, God love her. You know, it's been, she's been off for like two weeks over Christmas from daycare. So she's not seen any of her friends. The weather's really bad. So she's not getting outside running her, her legs off enough. And, you know, she hasn't seen a while out of like cousins and family, like maybe once or twice. So it's, she's probably just like sick of the sight of us and needs, needs a new setting or whatever she's just bit, mm. maybe a bit bored and frustrated so I, I was like oh, I'm going to try and have much more patience with her today I mean we were awake about an hour and she was refusing to go on the potty and I knew she was going to wet herself if she didn't and I was just like what are just like screamed at her and then I was like literally an hour ago I had a pep talk of myself being all god love her and then an hour <laughs> later I was like I am already at my limit Yeah, it's so hard to keep like you're so much more cool, cool calm and collected than I am You don't. your fuse is longer than mine do you know what I mean <laughs> How did you manage to turn that into something? <laughs> um, but you can yeah. you can stay calmer for longer, which I get frustrated much quicker. <clears throat> but then I'm dead inside, as you say all the time too. So it's probably a massive plus. It's a benefit in this. In this, oh, I wish I was dead inside. Right. <laughs> I'll teach you. <laughs> Stick with me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, cause it's just so hard to know what's the right thing to do. Like, there's but it all... comes down to tiredness too with us. Do you know, I think that's a <clears throat> that's a massive thing too. Like, we're we're so tired. Like, you couldn't even begin not today. to. I'm not tired today. Are you not? I had a great night's sleep. I'm tired every day. Well, all day every day. I don't, you should try having a great night's sleep like me. I'm I'm gonna retire, very very young. From what? Do you mean from? from do you mean uh, sorry? That wasn't meant to be like I meant to go like from parenting, or do you mean no. from like? How do you fucking, how do you retire from That's what I, well, that's what we were discussing. Do you mean from work? You're going to retire young? How young? You may set yourself up a fucking pension because that's something we haven't done. 50. 
50, 10 so years. 10 years. So I'm going to have a 10 year plan. That's going to be my New Year's resolution. And then what happens at 50? Am I just going to keep you? No, I'll have earned so much that I'll not need to work. Okay. All my wee side hustles will all be just creating money and while I'm sleeping. This, what's your side hustles? I don't know, joke books probably or something. What's a side hustle? That's an actual job. Well, then a, a side hustle is like hustle. selling e-cigs in the back of a van. Because it's like a, it's like a, a thing that's only going to last a while. E-cigs? <laughs> well, apparently. <laughs> um, but anyway, what we're saying is, uh, what I what I keep thinking is, like I, last night I was listening to like stuff on like podcasts and all to you about how to handle toddlers. And I was like, I was having a bath and I was all annoyed I'm listening to fucking parenting stuff. Whereas I should be just like switching off and going, I'm going to just have a bath and not think about how to fix something that needs fixed but obviously there's like these like different schools of thought about like gentle parenting and coming like you're saying about coming down their level and like talking to them like they're adults when they're not and trying to reason with them when their brains probably can't reason think, yet I wouldn't say that's an adult thing I would say that that's a child thing no but I mean talking sense apparently you know it's for for young kids for toddlers it's actions they need and not words so like there's there's a girl I follow on TikTok and she's called like Brat Boston or something like that there and she's like she's like a like, hard line like nope this is what just smacks them <laughs> no but she's like this is what you need to do as regards like uh with like toddlers and stuff especially and actions speak louder than words like for instance when Winter was kicking off about the bath I ended up just lifting her and holding her in the bath with one arm and washing her with the other arm while she screamed and then lifting her out and drying her and it all lasted about 90 seconds and she got bath and that was the end of it but like you could have easily been like okay we'll get bath later then and then it, to me I think that just shows them oh well I just kick off and scream for ages and then I don't have to do the thing that they want me to do because mm. they don't go okay we still have to do it later they're instant they think about right now they don't think about later that you know that's but the way is that right or wrong is the thing do you I mean? don't, there's no right or I wrong know. I don't know that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. That's like, do you just go, do you like see it through? And she's like, no, they have to learn. Because apparently as well, by three, your your entire personality is formed. Mm. So like all of the key factors that will that you'll be later are already there by three and they're very hard to change. So the, I think the, the hardest work in raising a human is when they're like between two and three. That's all the things, that, that's, that's where they learn who they are. She is you though, isn't she? I get baths all the time. I don't even cry. Don't. Sometimes I cry. <laughs> Last night Sometimes I, was I have to hold you down. No. Uh, yeah. She's she, more me she's than you. you. Yeah. Like, as in, like, she's... And Rocky's more me than you. Yeah. He, yeah. I rest my Do you case. want to elaborate? That's it. End of podcast. Um, no, just because she's very stubborn and very not set in her ways because she's, she's a baby strong-willed. but she's yeah she's strong willed which is you which can be a quality for the most part but then at times it can be a a real what, what was it nightmare yeah um, do you not agree yeah and Rocky's like you loves the boob hmm. by the way also as another thing I have stopped breastfeeding my mm-hmm. breastfeeding journey for all my children done. is done no more pumping no more pumping in a breastfeeding sense like this is the first time I've left the house to go somewhere, like for like the for mm. the day, and not had to bring a cool bag and pumps, and that is like a game changer. Yeah. Do you see the mental load when you if your kids are getting babysat, like they're with your mum today, of like worrying that like the breast milk that I've left out there, if it's like off or if someone spills it, what do you do? If the bag gets left out of the fridge, what do you do? If I didn't send it enough milk and it drinks it all, what do you do? It's like you can't just run to Tesco and ask mm. for. Breast, breast milk, milk was you, you know, if you, you, it's it's hard to run out of formula. It's like there's loads of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you can just go to the shop and get some more. It's liquid gold, isn't it? Breast milk. Yeah, but I mean, I I did the six months, six seven months. And Unbelievable. It's mad that like that's that's the end of it now. Like sometimes I'm like, oh my god, because I've spent the past nearly four, three and a half years being pregnant or breastfeeding constantly. Mm. There was no break from either of those things. What did you say last week too? You've been pregnant for like over four different years, isn't that right? Ah, uh, but it's only two babies, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was pregnant over New Year's for both years. times. Yeah, mm. 21, 22, 23. 20, 20, 21, 22, 23. Um, mm. But like, I remember being really worried about finishing breastfeeding and thinking, because you do have a dip in hormones, because obviously breastfeeding gives you like a big, massive boost of like oxytocin and stuff that's like happy hormones in your body. And I was really worried that when I stopped breastfeeding that I was going to 
take a real nosedive and even like just go just be sad or whatever. And I remember uh, the, the the last one, well, last couple of times I was feeding him, just like holding him, just trying to like savor those moments because like, because it is lovely, it's such a lovely bonding experience. But to know it's over and forever, mm-hmm. and I had such guilt about putting him on formula, didn't I? Like I was yeah. just like, what am I doing? But like that's crazy, you know, because he eats food. But as well. You breastfed Winter for like 19 months. So how much of a window was there where you weren't actually breastfeeding her and then you started Ten again? Weeks. 10 weeks. do you know what I mean? So it feels like you've com- like fully breastfed for... I've breastfed for... Like two and a half years. Yeah, without stopping basically. Yeah. A couple months in the middle. And those during those couple months I was heavily pregnant. Yeah. So it didn't... Unbelievable. Yeah, but it, it, it's... Uh, now that I am completely finished it, I'm like, cannot believe how like freeing it is. Where you're like, I can go out and not have to... Bring up like I've I've left the house sometimes and gotten on the motorway and went, I don't have my pump with me. Mm. And like had to drive back and get the pump and then you're late for the thing you're going to because you can't not pump because you'll get sick. Even when you stayed away with your mate there just before Christmas, you had to go to the hotel and then go to reception and ask him to put your milk in their wee fridge. Which is until w- the next morning. Which would have been fine, right? Because I went down to the reception because the fridge in the room wasn't cold enough and I went down to the reception and like handed her like two bags of breast milk and it's just like they're clear bags they look like sandwich bags but they're a bit thicker and they're just like clear bags of breast milk and, she, and I said well, can I put these in your fridge like in the kitchen down here or whatever until tomorrow with their, their breast milk luck and she was like I know bother and then she called over like the guy who like works at the, the, the front door and then and he's obviously like all dressed like a top hat and all tails it's like the merchant and I had a hand in these bags of breast milk and he was just like, and he just like took it <laughs> off me like this. And we both know I just squeezed these out of my boobs. Like we both know that just mm. happened. Both of us are aware of that. And he was all, I'll just put these in the fridge then. And then he walked off and then he came back and he like got me to sign a post-it so he could stick it on it. Like so he could like store them with my name on it. And then the next day, then the same thing. And I went over to the woman and then she got a man to come bring them back out to me. And he was <laughs> the guy that works in the restaurant. And I was like, everyone's touching that. And yeah. it just felt dead embarrassing. It's like hand over a sperm sample or something, isn't it? It's just, it's like we both know I jizzed under that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like everyone's aware of what just happened there, which is so silly because it's just breastfeeding, it's just milk. Like, Did he jizz? Hmm? Did he jizz? Did he jizz? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Did he jizz? <laughs> Let's Did not call jizz? it that. <laughs> Let's not call it that. Yeah. So, um, but then you stopped breastfeeding now barely two weeks, isn't it? The last time was the 29th of December. Yeah, so your, your, your body could still take a bit of a... Joe, your your mental health could take a bit I of a dip. Don't like, know. I thought it would It's would've... still early doors. It's probably a good time though, because it's like New Year, and you like already feel positive about the New Year, and like you're you're for a couple of days, and then you break all your resolutions, and then you're back to the start, aren't you? Just I knee deep in chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> being knee deep in chocolate that would be my especially dream. with hairy legs and smelly feet and everything. <laughs> do you know, it would be like. Uh, but you wouldn't eat it at the same time. Well, then what's the point? It just feels nice. Does it? How many times have you been eating even chocolate? Do you know it's just chocolate melted? <laughs> and not eating it? Yeah, of just course. It's <laughs> a fucking hard chocolate. You wouldn't be able to move. Do you want to? This is the stupidest thing we've ever talked about. <laughs> what are your resolutions? Um, This is the year that I really, really want to work on improving as a stand-up. <clears throat> That's my main goal this year. Manageable, no gatekeepers. It's up to nobody else but me. It's not like a. It's not like a a goal where it's like I want to be on w- w- a certain show or do a certain thing that somebody else is in charge of. My New Year's resolution is something I'm in charge of. Do you know what I mean? So it's up to me, and I, I just want to spend uh, as much time because last year there was a lot of shows. I had a baby, and there was very little time, you know, to like properly work on. I suppose it's because my first tours this year as well, so that's that's my main priority, for work wise. Obviously, what's mm. yours? Is that it? Is that you? You've just won. Yep. Just work on stand up. Simple. People overload themselves and like I'm mm. gonna get a six pack and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and then by summer I'm gonna and I'm gonna like, I think people, and then you get really disappointed or you get overwhelmed and you're like I'm not gonna do any of these things. Yeah, it's too big of a change, isn't it? Yeah. People do too much and. It, they're they're extravagant. They're really like yeah. I people are the complete uh, opposites of yeah. what they've been doing for so long. It's like you can't do that. You have to make small baby step changes and build it up and build it up. But Isn't it's right? it's but it's easy to to let go. Do you know what I? Because in January you're so positive, you could be like, oh yeah, I could do all these things, and then it's just it's just too much. What's yours? Do you have one? Um, 
I'm, I'm going to have less coffee. I, I take four or five coffees a day, so I'm going to need maybe have two now a day. Do you and know I'm going to have them in the early part of the day too, before lunchtime. Do you so know what I think yours should be? Sorting out my sleep. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You guess what I should do? Well, I've been telling you for 12 years. Hmm. You, because you sometimes, when I be older, you, like whenever we talk about being exhausted because of the kids, like say we're up in the night or we're up dead early in the morning or whatever, whatever. And then I'd be all do, well, there was quite a gap between your kids being really wee and our kids being really wee where you were completely capable of having a full night's sleep. But the fact that you still couldn't is a chemical medical thing or whatever. It's, it's not. Oh, it's, it, I think it's the, the only time my brain is active is at night when I'm just about the to go only to sleep. Time? Yeah. <laughs> During the day, you're all just, day, it's just dead a, of the world. a wee squirrel sleeping and... Then just as I'm about to go to bed, the wee squirrel goes, let's write some jokes, will we? Or, you know, mm. let's... I know, I know. Let's digest the day's activities. I think that's what you should be focusing on this year because mm. you've said so many times, like, how your approach to the day is is completely different when you're knackered or when you're not. And how your approach to your kids are. Like, I have way more patience for the kids on days where, like, today I woke up and I was like, what, I, I went to sleep last night at half nine instead of to quarter past six. Mm. And that was like, that never happens ever, ever, ever. And then today I woke up going, I can, I can do anything today, yeah, and can handle a tantrum and can whatever because I'm not wrecked. So maybe you just need to that. That that should be yours. Yeah, I mean definitely. you can you can yeah. obviously do what you want. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think as well as that, just work on my health and my fitness and stuff. Um, obviously, the comedian's boxing is going to be in the summer, so I'll be working towards that as well. Am I allowed to talk about that? Nobody knows I know anything. Nothing. Right. Well, apparently it's in the summer. So, um, yeah, that's that's in the back of my mind too. So I've been working towards that. Yeah. And I'll continue to do so. And, um, yeah, I'll just, I'll, uh, I want to work on stand-up as well. I feel like since we've had kids, neither of us have properly, like, sat down and worked on our, our like, y- you do things in your head and you figure out jokes when mm. you're driving and you go over your set when you're driving because you don't have much time during the day. I remember a couple of years ago, Pat and McDonald saying to me, oh, the only time I ever get to work on materials, driving to a gig yeah. and driving home. And I was like, that's mad. But now that I have kids, I'd be all, oh, that makes sense because you mm. can't do it at home. Yeah. So it's usually just when you're on your way or on your way back. And even when you get in the car, it's the first bit of time you've had to yourself that entire day. Mm. And the last thing you want to do is go over your work that you're about to go and do. What do you do? Listen to music and sing and I sing. Do, you know I mean? do you sing in the car when you're on your own? Yeah, yeah. You don't more sing so, when anybody's around? More so since Stars in Our Eyes was coming up and I was like, I need to find a song. So I'd whittled it down to about 150 songs. <laughs> and I was just singing and singing and You never like sing. Like when the radio was on, I don't know how you don't sing. I feel like that's I'm more of a rapper. That's why. <laughs> but Jackie, you don't even you don't do anything along. You just like I don't know how anyone can put a song on, no even you know what some of the words, and not join in. I tap. You do tap. I I I'm so convinced I, I was. Uh, this year's that tap. Jesus that's coffee. Christ. That could be coffee related. Do you mean if I had two whatever coffees it, earlier whatever in the day? Whatever it is. That tap mm, tap 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 it, tap. You? Do you know what's funny? And this is a testament to what happens when you get married. I just think that tap was cute. I remember when I started going with you, if your laptop was open and you were you'd done a type, 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 and then the side bit of the laptop beside the do beside the mouse, you would sort of sit and tap and wait till the next thing you were doing. And I was all, look at us we tap, 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 tap. <laughs> Maybe you were doing a wee tune and all, and I'd be all, that's that cute. And it always reminded me of you that you always tapped everything. And then as time went by, I was all, see ya, tap. <laughs> he <laughs> needs to stop tapping or I will tap out of this marriage. <laughs> it was... Uh, I'm convinced I was a drummer in my previous life. Don't, don't know why I did that, but you just you just played the well a keyboard player. Mm. You weren't the maracas. Yeah, just it's like it's yeah, a, it's I, infuriating. I did all, I did all the time. I you're know. driving and tapping the steering wheel. Mm. You're like, but do you know what I think it is too? I constantly have songs in my head, so I'm tapping along to the songs. I'm not just going. Do, do I'd do rather I'm, you sang them at okay. the top of your lungs. Just I'd rather you tapped because <laughs> <laughs> I always <laughs> sing them. <laughs> Thanks for That's watching this so week's rich. episode. Um, yes, we'll wrap it up there. Yeah. Uh, we've already plugged our shows at the start. If you, by the way, Sunday Set Up is a play. Sex and City Hall is a play. And Got Milf is stand-up for anyone who's very confused about my face, but on all three posters. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what they are. Um, thanks for listening. And yeah. See you next week for another week. episode.